So this morning, I look across this crowd in front of me and I see some younger people and I see some middle-aged ones and then I see the more senior ones. Now this morning I'm going to talk about the comrades of life, of the Christian life. Running well and finishing strong. Reading from 2 Timothy 4. It's a very, very well-known passage. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I've never run the, the Comrades Marathon. And I thank my sponsors, Cadbury Chocolates, Lazy Boy Chairs, <laughs> DSTV, and my lounge couch. But we are all, in fact, in a race. And I'm going to read to you um, a piece which was written by Dr. George Sheehan in his book, Running and Being. And he says, I am at my best nearing the finish of a race. Until then, I am just another mediocre distance runner, just one of the many run-of-the-mill competitors well back in the pack, just one more old man trying to string together six-minute miles and not quite succeeding with that. But with a finish line in sight, all that changes. Now I am the equal of anyone. I'm world-class. I'm unbeatable. Gray-haired and bawling and staring and starting to wrinkle, but I am world-class. Gasping and wheezing and groaning, but unbeatable. I think we've all felt that sometimes in this race of the Christian life. Now, George Sheehan was a, a very well-known uh, cardiologist. He was a, a, a marathon runner. And then in 1991, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And he then eventually wrote this book, Running and Being. The interesting part of, of George Sheehan was that he ran this race right up to the end and he lived with passion and with purpose because he had an end goal. And as with him, they will come for each one of us to, to finish our life's race. And in Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 4, that is where Paul was when he wrote that. Paul had run his race. And it's interesting that he looks back, he looks at the, presence, uh, at the present, but then he looks forward and he looks at the end of the race. And with this finish line in sight, Paul picks up the pace and he sums up this dynamic life that he had. A life and hope even in death. The lesson that we can learn from this aging apostle would enable us to run well today while encouraging us to finish strong tomorrow. 
few weeks ago, we all most probably watched the comrades um, being run, arguably one of the most difficult and tough runs in the world. And there are many ways to complete the race. There are many that don't complete the race. But if we take today the Comrades Marathon and we put that into the Christian life, there comes a question to us. How are you doing in your race? So let's have a quick look how we can perhaps prepare better. Prepare ourselves a little bit better for this run that we have to run. So there's preparation. The getting fit. Oh boy. I don't know whether you've done that. Yeah. Join, the, join the club, fitness club, uh, or join the running club, and that lasts for a, for a little while. <laughs> and then we, then we unfortunately, uh, we lose out. But in the Christian life, in the Christian race, there's things like Sunday service where we get together as, as the Lord's children. There's cell groups, there's Bible studies, there are pre-meetings, and then there's men and ladies groups. And in Hebrews 10, 25, the writer actually says to the readers, please do not Please do not give up the meeting together. You know, there are people that says, well, I can, I can be a Christian, but I don't have to go to church. I don't have to go to Bible study. I don't have to go to prayer meeting. I can do it on my own. I can go to the beach, and I see God there in creation. That's true. I can go to the mountains. I see the mag magnificent mountains. And I can go to the forest, and I see the magnificent trees. That's all true. But there is that thing that you need when you run this race. You need community. You need support. And that is what the writer of Hebrews mentioned. And then, of course, we have equipment. Now, when, when, when I'm in the, in the running for a new set of tackies or sneakers or whatever you call it, I'm always out for a special and, you know, I see a good special and I buy it. Sometimes over the internet, and Ailey gets totally mad with me because she says, how can you buy shoes over the internet? Um, and sometimes they don't really, they're not really comfortable, but I can't tell her that. But uh, when you run the race like a comrade's, you need the best shoe. You need the best apparel. You need the best equipment. So we have, in the comrades of the Christian life, we have the Word of God, which should be part of our daily diet. We have prayer that should be our daily exercise as we converse with God about the road ahead. And then, of course, there's the regular running with our fellow runners. We need to continually run with our fellow brothers and sisters. Because not only do they give us strength, how many times were we not able to put our hand under the elbow or ha our hand around the, the, the body of somebody to help them? Now, it's interesting, just a, a total aside, Interesting to note that 15% in the 2023 comrades, 15% of the people that registered for that race never arrived at the start line. There's 15% that didn't make it to the finish line. So we are sitting at 30% that never, never made it to the finish line. And that's actually sad because in the Christian life, that is sometimes also the case. We have the 
parable of the sower where the seed was sown. Some fell on the rock, some fell on very thin ground, some fell on the road, and some fell in the prepared ground. May it be that we be that seed that fell onto the good ground and that we can be part of this race. Then we come to the race. Now we have had the, the getting fit and we've got all our, all our equipment. Now we come to the race. Uh, unfortunately, the, the pictures are not all that, that great, but uh, if you see there, these people are running all kinds of different places. It could be a paved road, nice and tarred, like the comrades. It could be up in the mountain where you're running alone and where the air is thin and where you really struggle to get oxygen into your lungs. Or you could be in a group. So, how are we running? Paul, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 27, he says that we should be running with purpose. And when you look at these people, they're running with their eyes straight ahead, looking at the road, looking for the end line. Okay, there is one sort of sitting on the side. Uh, if you look nicely, it's me. <laughs> Because you do get tired, and you sometimes do have to take the break. Our pastor is on a, on a break, and we, uh, we wish him, a lo him and his family a, a lovely break. But during the race, we will have times when things don't go as planned. Um, and we will need, if we had planned, we will have our seconds there. We will have people that will come in and will be able to support us. They will assist. And in this race that we run, the comrades of Christian life, we will also have those that will sustain us. The Holy Spirit will fill us with strength. We will have our brothers and sisters being there to share with us our pain, when we hit the wall of poly shorts. And we all hit that wall of poly shorts in our lives. Or when you get that downhill just before the, you get into Durban to the finish line and your legs are cramping and they're screaming at you to stop. <laughs> but you can't stop because the finish line is right there. But then you need those people that will support you. And then we get to the finish. Now, looking at these pictures, we can all remember some of the well-known finishes in Comrades. We know the Creepy Crawly. We know the, the, the one that uh, actually, the person that actually sort of loses their mind because of, of exhaustion and turn around and run back. And the question is, to each one of us, how do you want to finish? I know I would love to finish like Gerda Stein. This, I mean, she was like running on air, waltzing down the, and still breaking the record, still running back to go and give high fives to her supporters. But whether you ra your race has just begun, whether it's sort of reaching the, the midpoint or nearing the finish, you can have the peace of God in your life. And you can be at peace with God. How? We do what Paul did. Paul consecrated his life to God. And if we running the com comrades of the Christian life. We run, and just by the way, it's not a sprint. 
too many times people think it's a sprint. It's a stamina. You need stamina for this race. You need to stay with it. And you need the support to stay with it. If you have not entered for this race yet, I want to ask you this morning to think very seriously about giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have not committed your life to Him and committed to this race that is ahead of you, please come out this morning and come speak to us. There will be people here that will be able to help you. And those of us that are in the race and hitting poly shorts or where we're cramping and we're thinking of giving up, please speak to your fellow brothers and sisters and rededicate yourself to this life and to this race. And to those that are running well, thank the Lord for that. Continue every day by doing your fitness program, still putting on your right equipment and running the race well. There's, of course, the story of Eric Little. I think we all know that. Um, 1924 Olympic 400-meter gold medalist uh, made the, the movie on him of Chariots of Fire. Now, Eric Little was the son of a missionary from China, a committed Christian that committed his life and that wanted to run the race. And in fact, he actually became a missionary as well, and he was imprisoned and he eventually died. But out of that movie, Chariots of Fire, came this statement that he was so committed that, that he was also committed to run for God to let the whole world stand in wonder. Not to put him on a pedestal, but to put God on a pedestal. So as you and I run the race set before us today and tomorrow, take time to reflect. Take time to reflect on your running and then remember Paul's words to Timothy to keep your eyes fixed on the end, on the winning line. Realize that with the Lord, you and I too can fight the fight, run the race, and keep the faith. May that be your experience today as you run this race that you do not give up. Don't be like me sitting next to the road and let everybody run past you. Let us run the race, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So as we now come to a time of reflection and rededication and move to the, to the communion table, let us remind ourselves of the cost involved to get us into that race. Let us look back and be thankful with thankful hearts. Let us confess our weaknesses and our failures. Let us ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to run well and to finish strong. And let us thank our Savior, Jesus Christ, that he ran the race successfully and completed it by defeating death on our behalf when he rose from the grave on that Sunday morning. 
and that he had his body broken, that he had his blood shed on our behalf in order to make a way back to God for us so that we can become part of God's family and thank him for giving us the opportunity like this today to remember the cost of our redemption. Can we ever, ever, ever imagine what it cost him? Can we ever, ever, ever thank him enough for what he has done for us? He has paid our entrance fee into this race. Let us run that race. So as we come to the communion table, I'm going to give thanks for the, the, the bread and for the, the, the wine, and then I will ask you that you come forward and take the elements, go back to your seat, and reflect on what the cost was to get us where we are today and to rededicate our lives to running the race to, on, to honor God for his glory and for he, the building of his kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can be here this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we have of coming together and worshiping you, being able to thank you for what you have done for us. Lord, when we look at the cross that is empty, we thank you that you ran the race to the end, that you did not withdraw that you had your body broken, that you had your blood shed so that we could come back to God. And Lord, I ask that as we take these elements this morning, that they may become new to us and real to us and that we, each one of us, will rededicate our lives to serve you and honor you and thank you for all the blessings that we have received from you. We ask this in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.